the master switch in your DNA that controls everything. Intro and hook. What if I told you that the fate written in your DNA isn't set in stone? What if there's a master switch that can control which parts of your genetic code are read and which are silenced, all without changing a single letter of the code itself? Think of your DNA as a massive ancient library holding the blueprints for every part of you. For a long time, we thought we were just stuck with the books we inherited. But now we've discovered the librarians, a complex system of molecular switches that can decide which blueprints to use and which to leave on the shelf, gathering dust. This isn't sci-fi. It's a very real field of biology called epigenetics, and it's changing everything we thought we knew about how our bodies work, from how we age to our risk for disease. This is the story of the ghost in our genes, the master control system that directs our genetic destiny. To really get the power of these switches, we first have to tackle a deep biological puzzle. Every single cell in your body, from a neuron firing in your brain to a muscle cell in your heart, has the exact same DNA, the same 20,000 plus genes, the same instruction manual. So, how can they be so wildly different? A skin cell and a liver cell have the same genetic library, but they read completely different books to do their jobs. How does a cell know what it's supposed to be? The puzzle gets even deeper when you look at identical twins. They are, for all practical purposes, genetic clones. They start life with the same DNA, yet as they get older, one twin might get cancer while the other stays perfectly healthy. If their genetic code is identical, what's causing this dramatic split in their health and fate? For decades, this was a huge question with no clear answer. We knew DNA was the blueprint, but we didn't know who or what was the architect. It was obvious another layer of information had to exist, a layer that sits on top of our DNA, telling our cells how to read the code. Scientists have given this layer a name, the epigenome. It's a dynamic network of switches that turn genes on and off. And unlike your DNA, these switches can be flipped. The word epigenetics literally means above genetics. It's a set of instructions that doesn't change your DNA, but instead controls how it's performed. Think of it like this. Your DNA is the script for a massive play. Epigenetics is the director. The director can't rewrite the lines, but they decide which actors are in the spotlight, which are in the shadows, and how loudly they speak. This direction happens through a few key ways, but two are absolutely critical. The first is called DNA methylation. Imagine sticking a tiny chemical tag, a methyl group, onto a gene. This tag often acts like a do not read sign, physically blocking the cell from accessing that gene. When a gene is heavily methylated, it's effectively turned off. This isn't a mistake. It's a vital part of how a brain cell knows not to make liver enzymes, and vice versa. The second is histone modification. If you stretched out the DNA in just one cell, it'd be about 2 meters long. To cram all that into a microscopic nucleus, the DNA is wrapped around proteins called histones, like thread on a spool. Histone modification is like controlling how tightly that thread is wound. The cell can attach chemical tags that either wind the DNA up tight, hiding the genes and turning them off, or loosen it, exposing the genes and turning them on. It's not always a simple on-off flip. Sometimes it's more like a dimmer, turning a gene's activity up or down. Together, these epigenetic marks create a unique signature for every cell type. They're the cell's memory, preserving its identity when it divides. A skin cell makes another skin cell because it passes down not just its DNA, but also the epigenetic pattern that makes it a skin cell. This is the solution to the twin mystery and the cell puzzle. It's not just the genes you have, but how your body decides to use them. So, these switches exist. But what flips them? This is where the story gets personal, because one of the biggest influencers of our epigenome is our environment. The choices we make, the food we eat, the air we breathe, it all sends signals that can flip these switches. One of the most striking demonstrations of this is the agouti mouse experiment. These mice carry a gene that makes them yellow, obese, and prone to cancer and diabetes. 
scientists took a group of pregnant agouti mice and fed them a diet rich in nutrients that the body uses to make epigenetic tags, things found in foods like leafy greens and beans. The result was stunning. The mothers, who were yellow and unhealthy, gave birth to pups that were slender, brown, and perfectly healthy, even though they had the exact same agouti gene. The diet had provided the tools to stick a methylation off switch on that gene, silencing its harmful effects. In a single generation, diet had completely changed the expression of a powerful gene. This isn't just happening in mice, it's happening in us, right now. Nutrients from our food can affect DNA methylation. Chronic stress can change histone modifications in our brains. Exposure to pollutants can leave a lasting epigenetic mark, raising the risk for disease. Even your sleep schedule can cause epigenetic changes that mess with your metabolism. Even more mind-bending is the discovery that some of these changes might be heritable. While most epigenetic marks are wiped clean when sperm and egg cells are made, some seem to slip through, passing a kind of environmental memory to the next generation. This suggests the experiences of your parents, or even grandparents, could have left a subtle imprint on how your genes work today. A radical idea that turns a century of biology on its head. This complex system of gene control is essential for health, but when it breaks down, the results can be devastating. We now know that errors in the epigenome are a major driver of many diseases. Cancer is the classic example. We think of cancer as a disease of genetic mutations, but it's also a disease of epigenetic chaos. Cancer cells can hijack the system for their own purposes. For example, they can slap a flood of off switches onto our tumor suppressor genes, the very genes designed to stop cells from dividing out of control. By silencing these guardians, the cancer grows unchecked. At the same time, it can remove off switches from oncogenes, genes that promote growth, and put them into overdrive. Aging itself is also deeply tied to our epigenome. As we get older, our epigenetic patterns start to drift. The system gets noisy. Genes that should be off might flicker on, and genes that should be on might dim. This epigenetic drift is now seen as one of the hallmarks of aging, contributing to the decline of our cells and our vulnerability to age-related diseases. And it doesn't stop there. Faulty epigenetic switches are involved in a huge range of conditions. In metabolic disorders like diabetes, they can mess up how the body processes sugar. In autoimmune diseases like lupus, they can cause the immune system to attack the body's own tissues. And in the brain, they're being linked to neurological and neurodegenerative disorders. For all its complexity, the most revolutionary thing about the epigenome is its flexibility. Unlike a DNA mutation, which is permanent, an epigenetic mark is reversible. An off switch that was put on by mistake can, in theory, be taken off. This simple fact has thrown open the doors to a whole new frontier in medicine. Scientists are now developing epigenetic drugs designed to do just that, reset the switches. Instead of just targeting a faulty protein, these therapies aim to correct the underlying instructions. Several of these drugs are already being used to treat certain cancers, with many more in the pipeline. Imagine a future where we could treat diseases not by destroying rogue cells, but by simply reminding them how to behave. The epigenome is also a fantastic tool for diagnosis. Because epigenetic patterns change in response to disease, they can act as powerful biomarkers. Analyzing the methylation patterns in a simple blood test could one day spot cancer long before any symptoms show up. These tests could also predict how aggressive a disease might be, or which treatments will work best for you, paving the way for truly personalized medicine. But perhaps the most futuristic tool is CRISPR. We know CRISPR as a gene editing tool that can cut and paste DNA, but new epigenetic editors have been created where the molecular scissors are turned off. This dead CRISPR can be guided to any gene, but instead of cutting the DNA, it writes or erases an epigenetic mark, precisely turning a gene on or off without altering the DNA sequence at all. It is, quite literally, a programmable master switch. The potential to safely and reversibly control our genes is immense. Our understanding of epigenetics is exploding, with new discoveries happening all the time. If this new layer of biology fascinates you, 
consider subscribing and joining our community. What part of this science excites or worries you the most? Let us know in the comments below. For a century, we've seen our genes as an unchangeable blueprint, a kind of biological destiny. The discovery of the epigenome shatters that view. It reveals a dynamic, living conversation happening in every one of our cells. A conversation between our genes and our world. We aren't just passive carriers of a genetic code. We are to a degree we're just now starting to understand active participants in how that code gets expressed. The discovery of these master switches doesn't just rewrite biology textbooks, it redefines our relationship with our own bodies, placing a new level of control, responsibility, and incredible potential right at our fingertips. The age of rigid genetic destiny is over. The age of genetic dialogue has just begun.